TBS Sports presents Atlanta Braves Baseball. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Atlanta Fulton County Stadium, where tonight the Montreal Expos open up a three-game series with the Atlanta Braves. I'm Pete Van Weren, along with Don Sutton, welcoming you to Atlanta. The Braves have been in first place since day one of the season. Tonight, that's at stake. They're only a half game up on some very familiar friends, the Montreal Expos, Don. Kind of like a family reunion when they come into town. The Braves see them every day in spring training. Played them six times this spring, beating them enough to win the Mayor's Trophy, but unfortunately, they won't let that count during the season. I've been impressed with the Expos for a couple of years. Years. I think their team speed is excellent. They're going to score a lot of runs and arguably the three best outfielders in Alou, Grissom, and Walker. But it's the pitching, I think, that keeps getting overlooked, Pete. I'll tell you, they seem to trade away a pitcher like Zane Smith. They lose a free agent like Langston. They lose a free agent like Martinez, but still manage to finish second, fourth, and right now third and not very far behind the Braves. So no accident this ball club's knocking at the door. And they're a hot team right now. They've won 12 of their last 14 as they try to take over the lead in the National League East from the Atlanta Braves tonight. Braves trying to rebound a couple of slow weeks. They've lost nine of their last 12. And we'll have the starting lineups and all the action for you from Atlanta right after this. Nineteen ninety four Atlanta Braves Baseball on TBS is brought to you by Smooth Bush Beer and Easy Drinking Bush Light. Head for the mountains of Bush. By Delta Airlines. You'll love the way we fly. And by Aflac, insuring over thirty eight million people worldwide. Well, that glove there cost him a victory, and it's being hanged at sunset. Now that's actually the way you tie some stuff up in it and it forms a pocket in the ball glove. But what are the little tricks of being a ball player? Beautiful night for baseball here in Atlanta and a good early season series that could mean something. Here's a look at our Formula 2001 starting lineups. First for the Expos, Lansing to lead it off, Floyd to follow, Marquise Grissom will bat third, Larry Walker to clean up spot. Then it's Moises Alou, Darren Fletcher, Sean Barry, Will Cordero the shortstop hitting eighth, and Pedro Martinez will bat ninth. The Braves have taken the field defensively. They will align with Klesko in left, Sanders in center, Justice in right. Pendleton at third, Belliard in place of Blouser, Lemke at second, McGriff over at first, Lopez behind the plate. And one of the best in the business. See that four and two record and that 112 earned run average? He's pitched better than that. Excellent control, better than a five to one strikeout to walk ratio. Since All-Star break last year, Greg Maddox has had himself one fine year, 16 out of 20 in the decision, an earn run average of less than two. Good pitching matchup tonight and a great weekend series early here in the year. We're about set to get underway and glad to have Pete Van Weeren back with us. And Peter, kick it off. Okay, thank you, Don. Hi once again, everyone. Mike Lansing will lead things off for Montreal Expos. Just got off an eight-game homestand where they won seven, lost only one. And as we mentioned, a moved within a half game of the Braves' lead in the National League East. And here's a guy, you talk about losing players to other ball clubs, Delano to Shields, gone to the Los Angeles Dodgers. This guy steps in, hitting 272, a homer, nine RBIs, a seven game hitting streak. Not stealing bases like Delano to Shields, but filling his role as a leadoff hitter, getting on base. Well, you can weaken yourself one spot, though it may appear to be weakening you, if you can strengthen yourself some other place and if you have somebody like Lansing to fill in. The strengthening was getting Martinez. That's foul down the third baseline. In fact, if you think about this Montreal ball club, it was just, what, two years ago? They had Andres Galarraga at first, Delano DeShields at second, Spike Owen at short, Tim Wallach at third. Right. So they have turned over their entire infield and stayed competitive. Plus losing the pitchers you mentioned. They do an excellent job of scouting. We see that every spring. That man right there, too. They handed him a young ball club, and I don't think you could have picked a better one to hand a young ball club to. Here's the 0-2 on the way, and it misses outside. One ball, two strikes. Bob Davidson calling the balls and strikes tonight. The 1-2 just missed outside, 2-2. Two 
Greg Maddox has yet to give up a first inning run in his first six starts this year. So you expect him to get off to a good start. Lifetime 10 and 8 against Montreal, but a good earned run average 2.67. Broken bat toward third. Pendleton. On to first. Good footwork there by Fred McGriff. As that throw sailed a bit on him, he came to the other side of the bag to take the throw. One down. Some first basemen never master that move. Easier for Fred because his glove is on the right hand, so he can step over in foul territory, still have the glove out there. And how about Pendleton, Pete? The move that he has gotten, where he turns to the side to feel those balls, that's like adding uh, three feet to your throw. It gets it over the first three feet quicker. Now the first baseman, Cliff Floyd, a six-game hitting streak. He's at 286 with a homer and eight RBIs, the minor league player of the year. Voted that way by three different publications last year. Played at three levels last year. Started out at double A of that Harrisburg team that was so highly touted. Then went to Ottawa, then to Montreal. Hit 29 home runs combined between the three. And the first one all the way to the backstop. Ball one. This is only his fourth full year of professional baseball. He's only 21 years old. The Expos look at him as a potential Willie McCovey type player. Got a similar build, similar swing. 2-0 the count to Cliff Floyd. On the ground toward Lemke. He had that hole plugged on to first, two down. So quickly Maddox gets the first two on ground balls, and when Greg is effective, you'll see a lot of ground balls. And when isn't he? It seems like he's <laughs> effective just about every time he goes out there. You'll see Braves infielders getting outs on balls that a number of times with other ball clubs you'd look up and they would be headed to the outfield. And the reason they can do it behind most of the Braves starters is that they are so consistent. You can go ahead and set your defense according to the chart of where the guy most often hits the ball. If you're throwing, if the pitcher's throwing the ball all over the park, Pete, then you've got to play him just straight up and hope they hit it at you. Marquise Grissom, 267, a homer, 16 RBIs. Been in a little bit of a slump lately, just 216. Larry Walker has been in a little bit of a slump lately. John Wetland just got off the disabled list, yet the Expos have won 12 of the last 14. Kind of scary, isn't it? Yes, it is. The 1-0. Half the knees for a strike, one ball, one strike. It's almost like the split squad has been beating you. That's right. Or been beating somebody. Grissom has had good success against Maddox. 355 career average, 11 for 31 with a homer. Outside corner, one and two. Every day, Javi Lopez gets more confident and smoother and smoother working with these pitchers. Moves very subtly to the spot. Keeps getting each time out gives a better and better target. The one two on the ground off the glove of Maddox. Pendleton charges. Can't find the handle. Safe at first is Marquise Grissom. That's one of those where you almost have to feel it with your bare hand to have a chance to get a speedy runner like Grissom, and Pendleton just couldn't connect. It's also one of those where you get the feeling, too, if Maddox doesn't get a glove on it, Belliard throws him out because that wasn't really crushed. You can see the high hopper. That was going to bounce once in front of Belliard, and you can see from that picture there, Raphael was already over back a second. But you can't tell a pitcher, don't try to field your position because more often than not, he'll make that play, and it's beneficial. Still waiting for the official scorer to rule on that one. Larry Walker, the batter. That's not, that should not require a wait. That's a base hit all the way. It should be. Walker, 267, three homers, 16 RBIs back in the lineup after missing a game with an ailing left knee. Two men out with Grissom, a speedy runner at first. The official score is calling that an error on Terry that's a Pendleton. Poor call. Well, that's, a that's an absolute poor call because Maddox deflected it. Pendleton out of position, had to hurry. It couldn't come up with it. That's a poor call, and, I, and, he, and Grissom can fly. I would hope that before the night's over, that's rectified. That's one that might get changed as soon as the Braves get back in the dugout and take a look out of that scoreboard. Here's the pitch to Walker. Inside corner, nothing in one. Sometimes with the communications now between the dugout and the press box, you'll see a manager or a coach call up to the press box and ask to talk to the official scorer and plead for his player to change the call.
Again to first, again Grissom back. Grissom so far this year, 8 of 11 in stolen bases. At 53 last year, 78 to lead the National League two years ago. Pitch out, runner not going. One ball, one strike. He just wasn't going because they didn't tip that one off. That was disguised very well. Maddox didn't change his delivery, and Lopez out from behind the plate very late. And you see where that pitch out was? About letter high in the right-handed batter's box. That's textbook. Two outs. Grissom gets his lead. And the 1-1 one -one to Walker is fouled back. A ball and two strikes on Larry Walker's. One of the most unheralded stars in the game. And I think he likes it that way. He was one of the most embarrassed stars in the games yes, about a week was. or so ago. Gave up a souvenir a little bit early. I think that was out in Dodger Stadium. After two are out, catching a ball in foul territory with a runner on base and trying to get a couple of all-star votes, <laughs> handing it to a youngster in the crowd. The one-two. Inside, two and two. A lot of the so-called experts have speculated that he is being offered up for trades and that they'd like to get him out of there because he's, he's coming up as a free agent. But when you're a ball club that's got a chance to win, and when you've got the cleanup hitter right in the middle of it and all the things he, he can do, the only way you're going to hear him offered up in trades is if they get blown out of this thing and it's over with before September. And I don't see that happening to the Expos. Maddox calling Lopez out. Make sure they're together on the pitch on this 2-2 count to Walker. Beautiful night here in Atlanta. And the crowd still filing in. And we'll have a full house or close to it tonight. Here's the 2-2 on the way and it missed outside. Full count three and two. Well, the runner will be going now. And Fred McGriff informing Maddox he'll not be holding the runner with a full count. Louis Pujols, the coach over at first base for Montreal. There goes Grissom. 3-2 is foul back. It remains full on Larry Walker. Not many secrets between these two teams, as Don mentioned. We see these Expos, oh, probably counting the B games a dozen times in spring training. You think they kind of downplay it down there, don't you, coming out of spring training? I mean, downplay how good they think they're going to be. Well, I've never left a spring training first, the 3-2 pitch to Walker, foul back still 3-2. I've never left a spring training where Montreal's writers, manager, players, front office people, PR department, or anyone else connected with the team has any idea what the team is going to do. They usually say, we, we just don't know. We've got so many new, new people in the starting lineup. We've got so many new people on the pitching staff. We just don't know how it's all going to mesh. And then you get a month into the season, and there they are, a half game out of first place. Again, the 3-2 with Grissom going, and again, it's fouled off at the plate. Still three balls, two strikes. Definite advantage to a pitcher of Maddox's caliber here because he's already made three out pitches and still is going to have to make at least one more. A lot of pitchers can't make three consecutive out pitches. But Maddox can do it, and he's done it with three separate pitches, a fastball running in and, two, and a changeup running away and a fastball running away. Here's another 3-2, and it's a ground ball hit out toward Lemke. And that'll do it for Montreal in the first. They leave a runner. We played a half inning with no score from Atlanta. No score. Braves up for their first swing, and here's the batting order. It's going to be Deion Sanders leading it off. Pendleton in the second spot with Blouser out. Ryan Klesko third. McGriff cleaning up. David Justice, Javi Lopez, Mark Lemke, and Rafael Belliard to follow with Greg Maddox batting ninth. Defensively, the outfield we talked about, Alou in left, Grissom in center, Walker in right. A good infield, Barry Cordero, Lansing, and Floyd. Darren Fletcher, a late bloomer of sorts behind the plate. And Pedro Martinez on the mound. Off to a good start. Not one loss rise, but the ERA good, as Pete told you, came from the Dodgers in a uh, deal for Delano to Shields and get ready for a right-hander who will pitch inside. Leads the National League with six hit batsmen. I personally do not believe he's a headhunter. It's just his way of pitching, but 
Look at the difference in the Braves and him. He's a good young pitcher. He's going to be even better. And he has been involved in a couple of incidents. One involving Reggie Sanders, a bench-clearing brawl with the Cincinnati Reds. Sanders got suspended. Now today, the National League announcing that San Diego Padres outfitter Derek Bell has been suspended for five games for charging the mound against Pedro Martinez for the same reason. And the first pitch to Deion Sanders up high, ball one. Deion struggling right now. He's averaged down to 311. Three homers, 15 RBIs. Been stuck on 15 RBIs for over a week. Just one for his last 20. Off the end of the bat, up the middle, base hit center field. Maybe that'll get Dion going. Didn't hit the ball that well, but found a spot right up the middle. And he's aboard with the leadoff single. Change up from Martinez, and he has a good one. He has a fastball, a slider, and a change up. That's a swing you wouldn't have seen Deion Sanders take last year, but it's one of the adjustments he's made in moving into the leadoff spot. That is the ability to put the ball in play. When he's hitting the ball on the ground and not in the air, he's going to get more hits. Now Terry Pendleton batting 333, three homers, 15 RBIs. During this little slide, the Braves have been in losing nine of their last 12. Pendleton's average one that hasn't dropped much. Over to first and back safely, Sanders. And again, Terry Pendleton, one of the great tinkerers in that batter's <laughs> box. He knows about the Martinez changeup, so look how far up in the front of the batter's box Pendleton stations himself. That is not a bad idea for anybody because what it does, it allows you to get to that when it's going a little bit quicker, that changeup that is, and you can take a little of the movement out of it. Martinez is a little bit of a tinkerer too on the mound. He uses a step off, and the way that he gets set, the spread out, holds the hands high, something uh, I'm almost certain that he picked up from Ron Paranowski, the very excellent pitching coach of the Dodgers. Over to first, Dion back. Deion Sanders with 10 steals and 15 tries this year. He stole his first six bases that he tried to steal this year, just four of his last nine. Pitch out. One ball, no strikes to Terry Pendleton. Pendleton moving into the number two spot with Jeff Blauser on the disabled list with that full ribcage muscle. In the air, deep center field. Back goes Marquise Grissom to the wall. This one is caught against the wall by Grissom, throwing back to the infield. Deion Sanders back to first. Marquise Grissom, who plays a very shallow center field because of his ability to go back on the ball, just went back about as good as you can on that one. One down. Got it open, caught it like a wide receiver. Pendleton crushed this ball. Fastball down in the strike zone. Watch Grissom. Keeps his eyes on the ball, picks up the wall, then goes back to the ball, knows where he is, catches and turns because he's expecting to hit into the wall. When he turned, it caused the ball not to be knocked out of his glove and also cushioned his impact. Fine he play hit. by Grissom. Nobody in the National League goes back on a ball better than Marquise Grissom. Here's Ryan Plesko, 323, six homers, 15 RBIs. Martinez steps off. Since we were with you last, the Braves made one other roster change. Mike Kelly, who is not getting a whole lot of playing time up here, sent back to Richmond so he can play every day. And Jarvis Brown, who almost made the ball club in spring training, has been called up and has joined the ball club as a reserve outfielder. Dion bluffing the pitch hit on the ground towards second. Lansing goes to Cordero. One on to first. That is a double play. Some nice defense for the Montreal Expos in the bottom half of the first inning. After one from Atlanta, they'll score. No score as we go to the top half of inning two. Moises Alou will lead off for Montreal. He'll be followed by Darren Fletcher and then Sean Barry. Alou off to a great start. 387 for the year. With three homers, 15 runs driven in. And lines the first pitch right at David Justice. One pitch, one out in the second. Coming into this game, Moises Alou up near the top of the league and hitting the league leader, Ellis Burks at 420. Alou third, Tony Gwynn 402, then Alou 387. 
And now Darren Fletcher having a good year so far. 319, a couple of home runs, seven RBIs. This guy's a much better hitter the last couple of years than he was early in his career, Don. I think he's one of those guys, Pete, that needed to play and needed to play a lot to get comfortable. You see that happen. Some, the more they play, the more you find out what can go wrong with their swing. I just think he's one of those guys that, that gets more and more comfortable. Good guy, good handler of pitchers, and maybe he won't hit 319, but he's certainly no 220 hitter. Here's the one strike pitch to him, filed back, nothing into another former Dodger. See, he grew up in that organization at a time when Mike Socia was at the top of his career, and here is Fletcher, a left-handed hitting catcher. You're not going to unseat Socia, so uh, rather than let him rot on the vine there, they did at least move him on and give him a chance to play someplace else. Low and inside, a ball and two strikes. No score, top half of inning two. Tomorrow night, Tom Glavin against Jeff Passero. Sunday afternoon, John Smoltz against Ken Hill, and the Phillies come to town. In the air to left. Klesko makes the call. And the catch, two down. You remember early in the first inning we were talking about the Expos winning all these games with Grissom in a slump Walker in a slump Wetland on the disabled list but one of the reasons they're winning is because this part of the batting order has been producing a 387 Fletcher 319 and now Sean Berry 373 with a couple of homers and nine RBIs you see that left elbow of his bandaged he sat out the last two games after being hit by a pitch from the Dodgers Darren Dreyford right on the elbow and he takes a strike in the outside corner on one. He has only seen Maddox six times, but he has been successful against Greg getting hits in half of those three out of six. Two outs, bases empty, no score here in the top of the second. That's filed back, and it's quickly 0 and 2. You know, in his approach to hitting against Maddox, it almost looks like he gives him the fastball, which can be dangerous to do as accurate as Maddox is with it. But with that last swing, it was a swing that looked like a guy sitting on a breaking ball, going to wait, 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 and then try to hit the breaking ball. Maddox likes to use the fastball 0 and 2. That's the count he's got now. And there it is, and it missed by an eighth of an inch. One ball, two strikes. Barry acquired from the Kansas City Royals organization. Expos made some good trades for young up and coming players from other organizations to keep their club solid. Here's the one two on the ground to McGriff Maddox will be there but McGriff doesn't need him one two three for Montreal in the second we go to the bottom half no score from Atlanta. Time for us to remind you this telecast is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Atlanta National League Baseball Club and is intended solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, retransmission, or the use of the pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Atlanta National League Baseball Club is prohibited. And while I have your attention, don't forget at the conclusion of this game, we'll be letting you in on who is selected as the holiday in player of the game. No score as we go to the bottom half of inning two. And Fred McGriff, 287, five homers, 16 RBIs, leads it off against Pedro Martinez, younger brother of the Dodgers' Ramon Martinez. First pitch, low and in, ball one. Primarily relief pitcher last year with the Dodgers. You want to hear some skimpy numbers. The league is only hitting 172 against Martinez this year. There's that high tight fastball, 2-0. and oh. But last year... When he had two strikes on a hitter, hitters hit 113. With runners in scoring position, hitters hit 165. One nothing Atlanta. No doubt about that one. Home run number six, RBI number 17 for Fred McGriff. The Braves getting Greg Maddox the early lead, something he's pitched very well with these last two years. Columbus discovered America on a trip just a little bit longer than that. Watch the ball run back out over the plate. Look at the extension, and that's one Fred can enjoy. Almost to the upper deck. 
Now David Justice hitting 277 with three homers and eight RBIs. Six homers on the year now for McGriff. Ties him with Javi Lopez and Ryan Plesko for the club lead. One ball, no strikes to David Justice. That catches the outside corner, one and one. Braves have some have the ability to score Pete, and it's been awfully important this year in their success to get on the board first. 15 and 2 when scoring first. Look at what happens when the opposition gets on the board first. That was only the third homer allowed by Martinez. He's pitching in his 34th inning. Two and one, the count and justice. In the air to right, shallow coming in, Walker. One down. And here comes Javier Lopez. Lopez, 286. He has six homers. He's driven in 18. Leads the Braves in RBIs. One ball, no strikes to Lopez. When Martinez gets in trouble, it's going to be on that pitch right there thrown the way you just saw it. He has a tendency to cut under his breaking ball. See, it goes uphill and then comes down, gives the hitter a little bit longer look at it. And because he cuts under that fastball, Pete throws high three quarters. That's why he gets one running up and in on righties so much, and he'll run it up and away to lefties. Here's the 1-1 one -one file back. One ball, two strikes. Very similar to his brother as far as looks, as far as motion, as far as pitches. Somebody in the Martinez family taught those Martinez boys to change up at a very early age. He has another brother that's playing somewhere, too. I think he's in the Dodger organization. That's right. Jesus pitches in the Dodger minor league system. One and two to Lopez. One nothing Atlanta after the Fred McGriff home run. This one foul back. It stays one and two. He's not an overhand pitcher. He's not a side armor. He's in that slot that's in between. Gets a lot of life on the ball. Now that last pitch was a good one. Watch the ball come out of that high three quarter slot. As long as he stays up there, then he can keep it down. If he drops down a little lower, it's going to go up and in. Just off the inside corner, two and two. Boy, he gets great leverage. The 2 2 on the way. There's a good off speed breaking ball. And that's all for Lopez. First strike out of the night for Martinez. Two down. Hides that pitch very well, doesn't it? That's his changeup. And his motion is so good. He's, he has an animated delivery anyway. And his motion is so good on that changeup that it looks like fastball until you've already committed and then up too late to draw it back. Now Mark Lemke hitting 263. One homer, three RBIs, just two hits in his last 17 at bat, so he'd like to get it going again. And he takes a strike in the outside corner on one. Down and in, one ball, one strike. Now we're finally getting a computer that measures homers right. 462 feet. On Fred McGriff's home run. Two and one out of Lemke. Two outs, base is empty, one nothing Atlanta. Here's the two one to Lemke. Right down the middle, two and two. Outside corner, that's it for Lemke. Second strikeout for Martinez, and that's all for Atlanta in the bottom of the second. But the Fred McGriff home run has given the Braves a 1-0 lead as we head for the third.
One nothing Braves as we go to the top half of the third. The eight nine and one spots due up for Montreal here in the third beginning with shortstop Will Cordero. Two forty one homers 17 runs or 13 runs driven in. And he takes strike one from Greg Maddox. Down the right field line, long run for David Justice. Crossing into foul territory and tinkering with that bullpen mound. Always tricky, but Justice makes the catch one down. He made that play look so simple, but it really wasn't because he had to locate the ball. It's a tough time of the night. Now, see him take a look to find out where the mound was and then gingerly tiptoes up on it. Good thing that he was able to grab the ball just before hitting it, Pete, because if he had to reach up for that about the same time he took that little short, choppy step, it could have thrown him off balance. Now the pitcher, Pedro Martinez, 0 for 10 this year. On the ground to McGriff. Underhand to Maddox, three pitches, two outs. In the top of the third. Boy, when Maddox is sharp, he never gets behind a hitter. It's either a first pitch strike for an 0 and 1 count, or else the pitcher's up there hacking at the first one. I think we've probably said this before on some of our broadcasts, but I was talking to Marlins pitcher Charlie Huff about Maddox, and he said, you know, some pitchers throw the ball to try to make the hitter swing and miss it every time. Maddox throws the ball to make you hit it and he knows you're going to hit it but you're not going to hit it hard. Which in a nutshell is a good definition of pitching. Absolutely. So the first time around the order the only one that reaches is Marquise Grissom on the penalty and error. And now Mike Lansing who bounced to third his first time up. I got to admire this guy. He was not drafted by any major league team. Nor was he signed by a major league organization as a free agent. He was signed by an independent Class A team in Miami and played there for two years before the Expos purchased his contract. And now here he is, an everyday player in the major leagues. And that's going to be caught by Lemke for out number three. Another one, two, three inning for Maddox. We go to the bottom of the third. Still one nothing Atlanta. We go to the bottom of the third. Braves leading at one nothing on the Fred McGriff homer, and Rafael Belliard will lead off, followed by Greg Maddox and then Deion Sanders. Belliard 3:46 for the year. There is the most animated vendor in Atlanta Fulton County <laughs> Stadium. That gal that sells the hot dogs, you can hear her all over the ballpark. She sings her sales pitch. Didn't recognize the tune, but it's very effective. First pitch to Belliard, low and away, ball one. <laughs> Two and zero, oh, the count on Belliard. When Blouser went on the DL, Mike Mordecai called up from Richmond, and then we told you about the other move, Mike Kelly. Sent back to Triple A. Jarvis Brown called up to the big club. And that was nothing against Mike Kelly in the way he's played. It was simply that he wasn't getting very much playing time. And at his age, they just felt that Mike needed to be in the everyday lineup somewhere. And he'll be back. It's got to be a tough call for a manager and a general manager. You don't want to hurt a kid's feelings, but you've got to do what's best for him and for the organization. And a talent of Mike. Kelly's is not going to get better as look at Jarvis Brown is not going to get better getting one at bat every six or seven days. He needs 25 30 at bats a week. Two and two the count on Bell Yard. Off the screen still two and two. Belliard, a reserve player that truly understands his role. You will never hear Raphael Belliard complain about lack of playing time, even if he sits for three or four weeks at a time. He just stays ready for these situations. When he's needed, he's ready. On the ground, sharply toward second, Lansing on to Floyd, one down. 
And that'll bring up the pitcher Greg Maddox. Maddox 154 for the season two out of 13 he does have one extra base hit a double and his four sacrifice bunt leads the ball club Pedro Martinez pitching the Maddox fly ball to Walker back about three steps for the catch two down and back now to the top of the order and Deion Sanders Dion had a base hit in the first inning was he raced when Clesco hit into a 4 6 3 double play. A couple of former Braves on the transaction list today Jeff Reardon former Atlanta relief pitcher released today by the New York Yankees. And catcher Jerry Willard, remember him? The big contribution he made back in 1991 during the playoffs. He's back in the big leagues, called up by Seattle. Called strike one to Sanders. It's nothing in two. It's also a football note here, but it can't be. Yeah, I saw that. The uh, New York Giants have. Well, Re you, rescinded their contract offer to Clarence Jones. Well, you told Clarence <laughs> early in the year. I he told was, him one one sport was enough. One was uh, enough don't, for don't him. Don't try to be another Dion. That's all for Dion this time. Martinez gets him. Third strike out for Pedro Martinez. One, two, three. Go the Braves in the third. After three, Braves one. Expose nothing. Quick look at National League scores. Phillies and Florida tied at three after one. Gary Sheffield's 12th homer. Houston leads Cincinnati early. Pittsburgh up early on Chicago. Pete Smith against Bob Tewksbury in St. Louis tonight. Later on, the Dodgers and Giants. Colorado and San Diego. Fourth inning. Here's Don Sutton. All right, Pete. Floyd to lead it off. Braves on top one to nothing. Thanks to McGriff's 460 plus foot homer to right field. A one hitter being fashioned. Well, let me correct that. What should be a one hitter is being fashioned by Maddox instead of the air. And I was so sure that I didn't even change that in my scorebook. And I may not, as far as that goes. I'll just look out and read the, the uh, scoreboard here. 2 0 to Floyd. Make that 3 0. Expos 5 and 7 against the Braves last year, 3 and 3 here in Atlanta. And it was pitching, pitching, and more pitching every time these two ball clubs got together. There's strike one. You know, you talk about moving to the new division. I think this will be a very, very good rivalry simply because the Braves and Expos are so close in spring training, sharing the same facility. And they've had so many good battles over the years, as it is, even when they were in the other division. A chance for Lemke. No, it's going to be McGriff feeding Maddox. Maddox, that's another thing he does so well. Lemke was over to pull and could have taken it. But Maddox did not just take for granted that Lemke was going to get a good play. As soon as a ball is hit to the right side of the infield, you'll see Maddox sprint over to first base. He is always there to take a throw. Eight in a row set down by Maddox, and it'll bring up Marquise Grissom. He was... The batter who caused that controversial scoring play off the glove of Maddox deflected over to Pendleton. And the throw late to first base. Ball one. <laughs> Should be a question mark behind that maybe. One ball and no strike. Grissom almost at home when he comes into play here. And they get two and oh. We're talking about the matchups last year in the 12 games that they played. The ERA for the Expos against the Braves all year long about 2.95. The Braves ERA 286. That's about as evenly matched as the pitching can be. A strike to Grissom two and one. Yeah, that's right. Hal Galima reminds me that 295 or 297 earned run average also includes a game. Remember when the Braves scored 18. So those other 11 ball games, Expos pitching very stingy. To right field, Justice back a couple of steps. 
And now in a couple. Two gone. Nine in a row set down by Greg Maddox, and it'll bring up Larry Walker. This has been one of the ball club or ballparks around the National League that the Expos have enjoyed playing in since they've been coming here. Well, since 1980, only two leasing seasons here. And they're 16 games over 500 at 46 and 30 since the 81 season. Out of play, 0 and 1. They keep an interesting stat up in Montreal. They're very conscious of Canadian ball players. They have a couple on their team Dennis Boucher, a pitcher, and this guy, Larry Walker. They've got a list here of the all time Canadian native home run leaders. Walker is fourth on that list with 81. Pete Ward, who played to coach for the Braves, mm -hmm. third with 98. George Selkirk, the old Yankee, 110. The all time leader, Jeff Heath, who played in the American League in the 40s, 194 career homers. A ball and two strikes to Walker. On the ground, Maddox will handle this one. But on a clinic on fielding while you're at it. Another one, two, three inning. That's 10 in a row set down by Greg Maddox. As we head to the bottom of the fourth, McGriff's homer, the difference. Still one nothing Atlanta before we head to the bottom of the fourth. A reminder tomorrow night game two in this series a half hour earlier 7.05 Eastern time. Tom Glavin goes for his third win for Atlanta. And a good pitcher Jeff Passero for Montreal also going for his third win. 7.05 tomorrow night here on TBS. Bottom of the fourth Braves looking for a little insurance. Pendleton, Klesko and McGriff. First three do up. One run, two hits and one error. Supposedly for the Braves. 0-0-0. Zero, zero, zero for the Expos across the board. Pendleton first time up a fly to center. He drove Grissom all the way to the wall. Martinez is one of those pitchers that likes to get into a groove and a quick worker and Terry doing what you see a lot of alert hitters do trying to throw his tempo off backed out on him. Didn't work. He's 0 and 2. I thought pro golfers went to the driving range after their round was complete. Now they come in here and take batting practice. Isn't that what Corey Pavin? Corey did Pavin do? here. Larry Mize is here tonight. Kenny Perry here. We all also want to thank Don Riker, one of the uh, PR persons for Bell South, for a nice note, a nice little goodie bag. That'll take care of Pendleton. One, two, three. U turn. That's four strikeouts for Martinez. We want to join John Sherholtz and sending along get well wishes to his dad who is going through some surgery at the Good Samaritan Hospital in Baltimore, Maryland. John's father, a good, good guy, and I know John is pulling for him, and so are we. Mr. Sherholtz, get back in gear and back in harness. First pitch to Klesko is a ball, and it's 1-0. That's going to be an easy one. Grissom, who had that one positioned perfectly. And Martinez starting to get on a little roll of his own. That's eight in a row set down since McGriff's home run. Two outs for the man of the hour and a warm reception for Fred McGriff. Here's ball one. Looks like it's going to be a good weekend for Braves baseball and a good weekend for the Bell South Classic. So you folks stop over there and see some of beating my favorite professional athletes and then get in here for the game tomorrow night. One and one to McGriff. And John Daly, if you're watching, I like your haircut. Yeah, he got it just like Paul Azinger's, another one of our favorite buddies. And by the way, we want to tell Paul if he's looking in and we miss him here and the people at registration. Told me they especially wanted him to tell Paul that he was missed at the Bell South Classic. Up the chimney. Grissom takes charge. A busy evening for him. And again, the Braves go one, two, three, nine in a row, set down by Martinez. We head to the fifth. Still one to nothing Atlanta.
Top of the fifth and Moises Alou to lead it off for the Expos. Fletcher and Barry to follow. Alou first pitch swinging fly to right his first time up. There's a strike and it's 0 and 1. This guy likes that first pitch. He doesn't draw many base on balls. Eight walks and 100 at bats and four of them intentional. I remember asking Manny Moda once and I think it's probably been said by more than one player from the Dominican Republic. That one's high it's one and one I said Manny when you see a lot of players who are in the Dominican Republic. And Lou certainly good in about every category that you can think of there. He'll need a new bat and Maddox makes another play. When he's out there you definitely do have five infielders score that one unassisted you won't see that too much in your scorebook. And he saws this bat right in half. And picks up his third put out this one unassisted. That was a funny look on a lose face. Getting back to the story about uh, Manny Mota as Fletcher stands in I said. I notice in looking at the stats of a lot of Latin American players and specifically Dominican players I said how come very few ever draw walks they're always swinging he said well in baseball you can't walk off the island <laughs> he said we come to the park to swing the bat what an out to uh, make that 0 and 1 to Fletcher a fly ball to left field Darren's first time up. This one will get out of play. It's one and one. I think Pete told you Fletcher originally with the Los Angeles organization. He was traded to the Phillies back in 1990 for Dennis Cook at a time when the Dodgers were trying to put a left hander in the bullpen. Expos got him a year later in a deal that sent Barry Jones the right hander to the Phillies. One and two. You know, looking at some of the swings these Expo hitters are taking, I think a lot of hitters in this lineup are sitting on Maddox's change. He's been getting a lot of late swings in his fastball. And he'll pick up on that and watch him go to it more. Right there, but missing, and it's two and two. Not too often you see that. Normally there is a walk and there is one strikeout. And for Maddox, with 37 strikeouts in 48 innings that's unusual for him. Fletcher stays alive it's still two and two Pete also looking at the wire today we were talking about some of the things on the wire. First of all it's nice to see that the league president is not going to be he's not going to put up with that going to the mound and all that bull taking place. Now he's made the message very clear very early Leonard Coleman's going to be a little heavier on the suspensions. Here's a two two to Fletcher got him perfect pitch. OK put a one in that last column. First strikeout in a call one on that inside fastball. See where Lopez is set up. Doesn't have to move the glove. Got to be a delight to catch him. Two gone for Sean Barry. He grounded off the end of the bat McGriff his first time up. Takes a strike and it's 0 and 1. The other bit of news that came off is a little distressing to me, and I'm sure to a lot of other people who know the Haas family out of Oakland. Had the good fortune to spend one year with them, and they are notified the, uh, the American League they're going to put that ball club up for sale. They are looking for a buyer to keep it in Oakland. I understand the asking price somewhere in the neighborhood of 85 million. I would like to see that ball club stay there and be supported by. The city of Oakland and the Hosses are good people. Toward Lemke, and that'll do it. One, two, three again, and that's three, six, nine. Make that 13 in a row set down by Maddox. We're halfway home. He and his Braves lead it one to nothing. Joe Simpson, Skip Carey with you. We go to the bottom of the fifth. Pretty good pitchers, duel, Joe. Absolutely Skip and Maddox certainly his typical outing for him I think but uh, Pedro Martinez leading the league in strikeouts and average against when he came into this ball game with a surprising record of one and two but 
He's showing us tonight why his ERA is good and why his numbers have been good against him because he is an outstanding fastball tonight. David Justice leads it off. He flied to right his first time. A long Fred McGriff homer. The offensive highlight of the game. A great, great catch by Marquise Grissom. The defensive highlight. Let up for a strike to Justice. And the Expos have recorded no hits through five innings. Ground ball up the middle. That's going to sneak through for a Justice hit. Javi Lopez will hit a strikeout victim his first time. Lopez still leads the team in RBI. McGriff has now moved into second place with 17. Plesko, Pendleton, Sanders all at 15. Good balance. Martinez did a good job on Lopez first time around. Started him with a lot of breaking balls before going to his fastball for the strikeout. Justice a short lead outside one ball no strikes. I'm sure Don and Pete discussed it. But Joe if anybody's going to challenge the Braves in the East I honestly believe this is the team right here. I think so too even though they got off to a slow start. I think that start was a little deceiving too because of their 11 losses this year five have been in their last at bat. So they've been in a bunch of those losses. And the fellow you just saw, Felipe Alou, a pretty good manager. Took him a long time to get a chance. He was managing down at West Palm Beach in A ball year after year after year. Sort of a guy who was overlooked, but not anymore. Out in front of a curveball. A ball and a strike. If Martinez develops any kind of off speed pitch, whether it's a straight change or just throwing a slow curve, he's going to be dynamite because you sit on that fastball and you have to be geared for it because it's such a good one. I just noticed something I don't understand. And I'll ask you about in a moment. The 1 1. Fouled away. What's this guy doing wearing Don Sutton's hair? One of those, one of those idle things. Exactly the same do. If Don had only had his fastball, he might have won 300 games or more. He'd have probably won 500 if he'd yeah. had this guy's <laughs> fastball to go with everything else he had. <laughs> A ball and two strikes, the count. <laughs> right off the end of the bat, a little squib job. It's going to go for a hit. Dove for it, but couldn't come up. There's a break and a good start in the inning. Nice effort by the first baseman, but this one was really cued right off the end of the bat. And if Floyd doesn't glove it, Lansing's there to make the play, and they at least get one out. It goes as a hit. Now you have Lemke, Belliard, and the pitcher, the seven, eight, and nine hitters coming up. Mark just two of his last 18. Do you bunt him to get to Belliard on the pitcher? We will see. The Expos aren't too sure either. I think I would because even if they walk Belliard, it sets up a bases loaded one out situation where you might squeeze in a run if you wanted to with Maddox. Let's see how they play it. He's swinging. Base hit right field. Justice will be waived. They challenge one of the best arms in baseball. He is out at the plate. Runners at second and third. He was safe, Skip. I think he called him out primarily because he didn't slide. But David hit the plate before the tag was applied, and that's why he was out there arguing with Davidson. A slide, and there's no contest. But I think David probably expected to have to run over Fletcher to get to the plate, and he didn't. Let's take another look at it. Lemke jumped on a fastball and yanked it in the hole. Walker's setting himself up. He really didn't expect Justice to be sent home. 
throws to the first base side, but see how far Fletcher's got to go. Now watch David's foot and when the tag is applied. Foot's in, then the tag. See, Fletcher's expecting the collision. And there's no question that he got his foot in there first. Fletcher's expecting to be run over, so he was bracing himself, and the foot got down before the tag. So a break goes in favor of Montreal. Now Rafael Belliard is the batter. They tried to squeeze with him just the other night. And it's funny, you have the same situation with one out that you would have gotten from the bunt. That's strange game. I think Walker was shocked that they tried to run on it. He looked for the fastball there and didn't get it. 0-1. He made probably the worst throw I've ever seen him make. A two hopper off the mm -hmm. off the plate. A good throw, and there's no question. And I think Jimmy Williams kept the runner going because the lower end of the batting order is coming up. A base hit here, and all is forgotten. He has all of left field. If he can hit a ball in the air down the left field line, just a routine fly ball that drops. He chased it. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, and two. I don't think that pitch got to the front lines of the batter's box. There's a look at that left field alignment. Look how shallow Grissom is playing, and Walker as well as we get over there. It's about as shallow as they get. You wonder why the Braves have been struggling. That graphic certainly a big part of that story. Right off the end of the bat. That's about like Lopez hit his. But he stays alive and it's 0-2. But that's why Pedro Martinez is so tough on these right-handed batters, Skip. If they have, have to look for the breaking ball or anything off speed, fastball eats them up. They have no time to react. Infield in, which, if you can make contact, helps the hitter. Anything four feet either way gets through. Lined hard, but foul, and the fans battle for the souvenir. But they get no satisfaction as it bounces back onto the field to play. It's pretty obvious what Belliard's trying to do. He's just trying to protect the plate on an inside out basis fight off anything inside and make sure you got the plate covered in case he throws him another breaking ball and I'm sure he will see another one. The 0 2 high fly ball down that left field line a little on the run that ball is up against the wall two run score Billy Arn at second with a double and again he just missed a home run. Are you kidding me? Change up. He took through him a straight change up. Why? Why would he do that? Tried to trick him. Tried to trick him. He'd thrown him breaking balls that he couldn't hit and was chasing in the dirt, doing his best to fight off a good fastball. He throws him a change up right down the middle of the plate, which is really belly art speed. I mean, about an 85 mile an hour change up from Martinez. That's just right for Rafi, and he almost hit it out of here. Didn't miss by much at all. It's three to nothing, Atlanta. Braves have not hit him six zip. Amazing. Activity now, a right hander in the bullpen for Montreal. Strength to Maddox, 0 and 1. Greg flying to right his first time. Gil Haradia begins throwing for Montreal. A big hit for the little guy. Started to go, held up, a ball and a strike. If you're throwing pitches to a guy that's having trouble getting around on you, you certainly don't slow your pitches down to give him a more, give him more of an advantage. Yet that's what Martinez did for Raphael. Well, I can't. He looked as bad on strike two as any mm -hmm. hitter has looked in the history of baseball. But you've got to be thankful for the gifts that are given you. 
and give Rafi credit for taking advantage of. It. There's a pretty good hack, but he fouls it back. It's one and two. Chicago has come up with a six run inning and they lead Pittsburgh 7 1 in National League play. There's the good cut by Maddox. He was feeling good enough at the plate tonight in batting practice. He and Glavin were challenging Jarvis Brown and Mike Mordecai to a base hit contest. Pop foul back. Who won? Uh, not the pitchers. Good. Then all is right with the world. A ball and two strikes. Runner at second, one out, two in. Another off speed pitch. Thank you. Two and two. The outfield alignment very similar to Maddox as it was for Bellia. And he corks it into right center field. Walker is there. Belliard tags but stays right where he is. So it's up to Dion if the Braves are going to score any more here in the fifth. They've had one man thrown out at the plate and they've scored two. Dion has singled and struck out. A base hit to the outfield might plate another run. Boy, a contrast in defensive styles by the center fielders in this game. Sanders plays so deep, and Grissom plays so shallow. The play Marquise Grissom made on Terry Pendleton in the first inning, about as good as you ever want to see from a guy who's showing you that you can challenge him over his head, but he can still go get it. Right through there, nothing in one. And I think he's the best defensive center fielder in the National League, personally. He's, he's awfully good. With a pretty good arm to boot. Mm -hmm. Low and away. It's even now at a ball and a strike. Braves on top, three nothing. stretch and the pitch inside. One of the things that's been bothering Pedro Martinez of late he had walked seven batters in his last 18 innings but no walks tonight he's been around the plate and really this is his only bad inning gave up a home run to McGriff to start the second inning but until now he'd had things pretty much his way but two one. Let up, fly ball, deep center field. There goes Grissom again to the wall. He's got it, and the inning is over. And he makes it look so easy, and it isn't. But the Braves get two runs on four hits. Wild inning, no airs, a runner left at the end of five. Atlanta leads it three to nothing. Three nothing Braves as we go to the top half of the sixth inning. Time for tonight's Aflac trivia question, which is, who is the only pitcher to have won the Cy Young Award as an Expo? We'll have the answer for you in the bottom half of the inning. Well, I know two things for sure. It's not Steve Rogers and it's not Dennis Martinez because those were our guesses. Yep. Between any. Cordero leads off the sixth, takes a strike. It's 0 and 1. Lou Frazier has grabbed a bat and will come on to pinch hit next. Now a left-hander in the bullpen. Butch Henry up and throw it. Little swinging bunt. Maddox off the mound. Bare hand pick. Throw. Can't be. He beat it anyway. It'll be a hit. Greg threw it in the dirt. McGriff couldn't come up. It'll go as an infield hit, I would imagine, because it looked like he beat the play anyway. I think they call it an error. I think they call this an error. He beat the play. I don't know. It's an error in Maddox. 
I wouldn't argue too much with that one but I sure would argue about the one in the first inning that was a tough error charge to Terry Pendleton should have gone as a hit off the bat of Grissom. And Greg has a no hitter going but that shouldn't matter. Frazier pinch hits and takes it high one ball no strikes. They chase Cordero back. He's two out of two in the stolen base department. It's unlikely he would be running here. He could have used a hit there too. Oh, for his last 15 before that at bat. When you're in a slump like that, you take all the hits you can get. Let up. That misses. Two balls, no strikes. Lead off man on for Montreal again. Second error of the night. For Atlanta and both very very tough air. Right through there that time it's two and one. Frazier just two out of 13 on the year that's a 154 average he has great running speed. Veteran out of St. Louis Missouri. A career minor league player came to the Expos last year and hit better than he ever had in the minors. Yeah, he's been a valuable guy for a Lou off the bench, left or right handed, gives them a little speed. And can fill in in the outfield at times. I'm tight, three and one. Don't want to walk in. We bring the. Tying run to the plate in the top of the order coming up. Maddox has a little pep talk with himself. He has not walked the batter tonight. Runner does go. Foul tip. They play a little hit and run. It's three and two. Greg's two losses. I mentioned that. One was by a score of five to four, the other one two to one. I think in his first loss, he really didn't expect to win that one. He didn't pitch that well. But in the two to one loss to the Pirates, he pitched a good ball game, only gave up seven hits and only two runs. It's tough to lose those two to one contests. Three balls, two strikes. Well, they ran three and one. You'd figure they'd run three and two. They do. Struck him out. Safe at second. Ball pops away, but not far enough for the runner to advance. So Cadero steals his third base of the year. Frazier is retired. That's the second strikeout of the night for Maddox. And Mike Lansing is the batter. He is grounded to third and hit a looping liner to second. Lansing has a seven game hitting streak on the line here tonight. At the knees outside corner nothing in one. Braves infield really giving Lansing a lot of room on the right side they expect him to pull it if he hits the ball on the ground. Oh and to the count. Greg is quickly out in front. Remember, Maddox will go after the hitter 0 and 2. How far Fred is off the line at first. Yeah, ground ball down the line is big trouble. If Greg gets two strikes on you. Things are a little bleak. He knocks it down. He finds it. He throws him out. He had one go off his glove that turned out to be an error on Pendleton but he has made a couple of outstanding plays. It's another way he helps himself. Right and he robbed Lansing of a hit here perhaps although with Lemke playing that far up the middle he might have been able to glove it. I know he robbed Walker of a base hit 
to end the fourth inning on a hot shot hit back to him. He just winds up in a good feeling position at the on his follow through every time. He made an error on that throw in this inning, but he's a gold glove winning pitcher. Leads his team in sacrifices, almost never walks anybody. Pretty good hitter for a pitcher, and those are all reasons why he keeps winning Cy Young Awards. Cliff Floyd is the batter with two out, and he hits it foul to the left. 0 and 1 is the count. You know, too many other teams that have a guy batting second in their order that are 6'4, 220? <laughs> Not too many. And the Braves play him just about straight away and rather deep. Just missed. Pretty good pitch. A ball and a strike. Runner at second and two down. Took a little off. He chased the bad ball into the dirt. It's one and two. Well, that was an excellent pitch. I don't need to take a little off, but he put it in a good spot down and away, too, to make Floyd reach for it. Yes. Fastball inside corner. He went right after him. Strikeout number three, and the inning is over. No hits, no runs. One air, one left. Bottom of the sixth. Braves still lead it 3 0. Three nothing Atlanta headed to the bottom of the sixth inning and the answer to tonight's Aflac trivia question the only pitcher to win the Cy Young as a Montreal Expo wasn't Claude Ramon. Oh pretty tricky how Galima. That's an unfair question. So, so there really wasn't anyone and he made us believe there was well. There is a left hander on the mound for the Expos a new one Butch Henry. That's right Martinez went five innings six hits three runs four strikeouts. And Terry Pendleton will lead it off for Atlanta. By the way, the Braves have a kid named Kevin Grijak, who so far this year all he's done is hit 11 homers at Durham in 57 at bats. Not bad. That's that's pretty good. I think. Let's see. Over the course of a season, let's say about 456 at bats. Yeah, minor leagues. Minor that's leagues. About right. That's about right. 88 homers. That might make him minor league player of the year if he can keep it up. Maybe he can up his. Tell the kid to up his pace a little bit. Let's mm -hmm. go for a hundred. That might be a minor league record, you know. I think so. Even Steve Bilko and those guys, I don't think that that might. Pendleton leads it off. Who is the other guy? Joe Bowman or Bauman is a guy who hit a lot of home runs yeah, in the, the low minor leagues. In the Texas, New Mexico league or something. Yeah, something like that. One ball, no strikes. One and one is the count. Henry has no record in five appearances. He's gone six innings, allowed five hits. He has struck out four. He is a much traveled court sider. Fastball right through that. But as a port sider who can throw strikes, one can stay in this game a long time these days. Tom Bolton just called up again by the Baltimore Orioles. Mm -hmm. Another left hander has been up and down the last several years all over the place. Henry out of El Paso, Texas. Two and two, the count. Last year he split his time between Ottawa. The Rockies in Montreal in the big leagues he was just three and nine run run average over six. Uh, pop will it reach the seats. Darren Fletcher has room has the baseball one down. 
So Pendleton is 0 for 3 as he fouls to the catcher, and here's Ryan Klesko against the southpaw. And each test Klesko gets against, gets against the southpaw, a very interesting one. I know Don and Pete talked about Mike Kelly being optioned out and Jarvis Brown being recalled from Richmond. Dave Gallagher is going to get more of a chance to play. It's certainly no punishment of Kelly. They love him no. long term and they want him to get some at bats. High and away, one ball, no strikes. I think if anything, Mike Kelly needs to look upon what he did in spring training as a as outstanding. Coming from the ranks to make this ball club was a terrific job. Two and zero to Bryant. And I think maybe he was up here just enough to get it adjusted mm -hmm. so he understands what it's like. I think it'll definitely help him. Strike over the outside corner, two and one. Pusco not too sure about that. Two balls and a strike. Bobby intently watching something about. Could be he's watching Klesko here against the left-hander to see how he, he responds or how he hangs in there against him for future assignments. Outside corner again. It's two and two. Klesko upset. That's not that's not his pitch though, and maybe he's upset with the call. But Butch Henry made a good pitch on him with what looked like a slider. And from a left-hander, if it's early in the count, you don't want to swing at that pitch anyway. The 2-2. Golfed into left field. Alou coming on, still coming. It'll drop for a hit. Fresco makes the turn and scrambles back. He didn't exactly overwhelm it, but he got a base hit to left, and he's aboard with one out. And he took an inside-out swing at it, too. Watch this cut on an inside fastball. Just fought it off. And Moise Alou playing him deep had no chance at all to catch it. Dave Gallagher is going to come in and run for him. So Clasco departs. And with the lead, Gallagher, a much more experienced and better defensive outfielder, comes into the game. Here's McGriff, who hit a humongous home run his first time up. Plesko's numbers against lefties keep going up. How Galima tells me he's now four for ten. It's high, one ball, no strikes. Well, a happy birthday to our. What do we call you? What's your job? <laughs> Stage manager, Kerry Brooks, celebrating her 28th birthday again this year. <laughs> Many happy returns, Kerry. Happy birthday, Kerry. The 1 0 pitch. Line foul down the left side. A ball and a strike is the count. 3 0 Atlanta, our score, bottom of the sixth. Same two teams tomorrow night. We'll have it for you a half hour earlier. Be with you at 7.05 Eastern Time. Tom Glavin against Jeff Facero. And then on Sunday, 1.05 TV time, John Smoltz and Ken Hill will hook up. Henry has a good pickoff move, as I recall. A cynic would say because he has so many men on base, there's plenty of That's time true. to work on. But this year he's pitched quite well. The Seattle Mariners made five separate moves today. Players coming and going, and they trail Detroit in the bottom of the sixth in Detroit nine to three. They might make five more tomorrow. No, and Detroit knocked out Randy Johnson early. Strike over the outside corner. One and two the count. Getting back to Mike Kelly, I don't think it was in Bobby Cox's plans to use him any more than he was being used. We were talking about how much better it's going to be for him to play every day, and I think he recognizes that too back in Richmond. Jarvis Brown will fill a roll off the bench much like that of Tony Tarasco of late used as a pinch hitter and a pinch runner at times. A ball and two strikes the count. 
Hopefully Tony can get some more at bats. The wave has broken out and the one two pitch. Missed high it's two and two. The Phillies come in for games Monday night Tuesday night and a business person special at 1240 Wednesday afternoon. The weather is supposed to be good at least through the weekend. I don't know about next week. The 2 2 pitch. Curve hammered into deep center. There goes Grissom again. He looks up. That ball is gone. His second of the night. It's five to nothing. Listen to this crowd. That was a terrific at bat. And I'll tell you why. McGriff went up there and had in mind not to try to pull Butch Henry. He fought off a couple of balls, hit one down the left field line. And even the balls he was taking, he was really locked in. And watch this swing. This is an inside out stroke. Breaking ball down and away from him, but he had great plate coverage. And he was thinking about hitting him up the middle or to left field and launched one to straight away. Here's David Justice. Strike at the knees on the corner. 0 and 1. That is the 21st time in his career that Fred McGriff has had a multi home run game. Not too shabby. No. Low and away. It's 1 and 1. So Henry is roughed up for the first time this year. McGriff now with a team lead, seven homers and 19 RBI. Floyd has it. He'll take it himself. He wins the race for the second out. And Javi Lopez is the batter. He has struck out and he has reached on an infield hit and scored. Lopez, the other brave, with a two home run game this year. I mean now at 291 for the year. First one they listed at 462 feet. He's getting tired. This one only went 423. The pitch. A strike 0 and 1. And there's been some concern about the Braves and hitting against left handed pitching even the guys that normally hit well against lefties McGriff included but that's his second homer and eight at bats his last eight at bats against left handed pitching. Look out Jimmy. Jimmy Williams almost got picked off by that line drive. 0 and 2 is the count. Well you never know how things are going to work out but you feel pretty good with Greg Maddox on the mound and a five run lead with nine more outs to get. Lopez broke his bat. Bat boys these days are supposed to have a backup bat ready but obviously they didn't have the right one this time and he wanted to stick with one comparable to what he had up there earlier. Look at that. That's closing the deal folks. And one of those losses was this year when he lost five to four. What do they do to the bat boy if he doesn't have a bat on the on deck circle is that a five game suspension laps got run laps. Henry gets ready. Pretty well hit to right field, but Walker drifts back. And the inning is over, but not before the Braves score two insurance runs. McGriff's homer, the big blow. There were two hits in the inning. Nobody left at the end of six. Atlanta five, Montreal nothing. There's your Budweiser game summary. Maddox three strikeouts no walks. He's not allowed a hit. McGriff another two home run night with three ribbies. And Rafael Belliard chipping in with a big two run double. That came in the fifth inning. 
Well, there's a solid hit, a clean shot into center field, and that takes care of that. Grissom on the first pitch, and the crowd gives Maddox a hand. Well, if you're going to have one last up, that's the way you want it done. A solid hit. That's the first one that goes in the hit column. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Larry Walker is the batter. He is twice grounded out to the infield. A ground ball here would be nice. He's got a bad knee. Oh, he got away with a pitch up in the zone. 0-1. Walker had a home run cut. But he came up empty. Sure, Pete and Don talked about his embarrassment in Los Angeles, but boy, has he handled that with class. You know, he forgot how many outs there were, and he gave the ball to a little kid and went running toward the dugout and ran back, said, sorry, but I have to use this. Fired it in, and then the next inning brought the youngster another baseball and he said I'll see it my whole life on the highlights so will my kids and so will their kids that's the way it goes but see I love stuff like that I mean it just happens he was doing a good thing and you can't fault him for he did what doing something nice a lot of players have done he forgot how yeah. many outs there yeah that's a no no but it happens I did that once in Seattle and remember Cliff Johnson. Oh yeah. Remember how what a speedster he was. <laughs> yeah. I caught one in deep right center field in Seattle. Cliff Johnson tagged and scored from second. <laughs> well you were trotting in. Well I was running along the wall and Jeff Burrows my right fielder said Joe that was only two. <laughs> Thanks Jeff. Well I hope Jeff is uh, watching tonight. I know this. If he was your right fielder, you were way over in right center. I had center. to go so far to get the ball. I, my, the oxygen in my brain had depleted to the point that I couldn't remember how many outs there were. That happens to us a lot. <laughs> One time or another. Two balls, two strikes. Runner at first, nobody out. Missed inside. Walker takes a look at his third base coach Jerry Manuel. They could send Grissom from first here despite their five run deficit. He's going struck him out. No chance. But Walker is out of there. Strikeout number four for Maddox. Number nine for Grissom. He didn't have a big lead and he was looking over his shoulder to see how Walker did. But with his speed doesn't it doesn't matter a whole lot. And the thing is it of it is that even though they're behind by five runs the Expos have to manufacture some runs. They are next to last in the league in homers just above the Pirates. They've only hit 15. Gil Heredia in the bullpen as the hot hitting Moise Alou comes to the plate. Alou is lined to right. And hit a little dribbler broken bat grounder back to the mound that Maddox fielded on his way to first and took it over to the bag. Pickoff play close. He got back in there. Perfect throw. Grissom just made it. Another part of his game that Greg Maddox does well. He makes this throw right on the bag. Grissom's not that far off. Grissom has stolen third three times this year. Down five runs, you would be surprised if he tries it, but you never know. Marquise has a lot of friends and family here. He's from the Atlanta area. One that got away. Moise Alou, one that got away from the Pirates. Fastball over the outside corner. He was traded for Zane Smith. Check that. That could be because we traded Zane to Montreal for 
That didn't, wasn't one of the better trades that the Braves have made. Let's just leave it at that. There he goes. There's the throw, and he is out of it. Down five. He's caught trying to steal third. A nice tag by Pendleton. He had to spin around the wrong way. Grissom argues about it. And Jerry Manuel will now come in and try to get him away. But you don't see Manuel arguing. Terry had a long way to go. Got right in the baseline. Ah, I see what he's talking about. The ball beat him. That's why it was called out, but there was never a tag made. Well, they even out. Fastball outside. I remember David Justice being called out at the plate. He did a great job here. Saw that the throw beat him, pulled the hand back away from Terry and went around him. What a terrific slide. I don't care if he was out. That was a great slide. We all know he wasn't out, but he is, and it's two and two. Mm -hmm. Moise Lou was acquired back in 1990 with Scott Ruskin and Willie Green from Pittsburgh for Zane Smith. Yeah, it's missed outside. Full count. He's lost a little speed after the injury last year in St. Louis. Terrible injury where he dislocated his foot. But he has really come and he got up to, to a slow start in spring training. By that I mean he wasn't able to play until no. like the second or third week of spring training. All the people who saw that injury were sure that he would never even walk again, much less play baseball. That's hit well, but foul. And another 3 2 pitch will be offered up to the Expo left fielder. He is a very good fastball hitter, but what makes him even tougher on off speed pitches that he got right here? He just uses his hands, takes a very short stride, if at all, keeps his head steady, and uses his hands to flip that bat out there. Strong hands and wrists. No batting gloves either. That's rare. Yes. Little tap toward third. That's trouble. Pendleton will just take a big bite out of that. A hit for Alou. Makes him one out of three. And it makes him eight out of his last 18. And Darren Fletcher is the batter. So now the gunning down, as it were, of Grissom at third base is fairly significant in this game. Uh, pop short left, Bell yard out, Gallagher in, Gallagher calls him off as he should, and the inning is over. Two hits, no runs, no errors, one left, bottom of the seventh, they're on their feet here. The Braves lead at 5 nothing. Bottom of the seventh, Gil Heredia comes on to pitch. He's 0-2. He's had some tough luck this year. He's getting ripped, as you see. He faces the lower end of the Atlanta order. Butch Henry won an inning. Two hits, two runs, a home run. Radio last year was on that list of pitchers who were called up from AAA to pitch against Atlanta and beat the Braves. He pitched a terrific ball game here last year. Makes his home in Tucson, Arizona. Came up in the giant chain. The right-hander delivers. Check swing strike to Lemke. 0 and 1. 5 0 Atlanta. Our score. We haven't had an announcement of the attendance yet, but a good sized crowd is on here. Line drive, center field. That's the way the bottom of the seventh starts, and Lemke battles out of his slump. He's two out of three. The league hitting now better than 333 against Gil Heredia. Look where this pitch was. About shoulder high and maybe even off the plate a little bit. Mark was two for three on Wednesday night as well. The stretch pitch. High chop off the plate. 
Aradia has it to first. Oops, in time, runner at second, one out. And Greg Maddox, a batter, runner at second, one out. Well, we have our derby pool going again, don't we? Money Webster, by the way, has gone into camps for Montreal. I don't know much, or I don't know anything about horse racing, but nobody's ever heard of the horses I got. That was by design, Skip. I, know, I think it's something like that. You just keep entering the pools, and we'll let you know. Yeah, I know. Strike, it's 0 and 1. When is that? Is that this weekend? Tomorrow. It's supposed to rain, huh? In Louisville? I don't know. It's a wet track there today. I've told you my theory on horse racing, man. Does it have anything to do with mutters? No. Because mutters day is Sunday. Yeah, I know, I know. Now, I believe any sport where you can't interview the winner when it's over is not worthy of consideration. <laughs> the 0 2 pitch. Rounded foul over by the Atlanta dugout. Well has this been your biggest thrill in racing. Great. <laughs> Runner at second one out. Sit down and rest, Greg. That's where you were supposed to say something about a thoroughbred matter. Yeah, I probably was supposed to. I just haven't been feeling my oats today. Here's Dion. Runner at second, two down. Cubbies hammering the Pirates 8-1 tonight. We'll have all the scores for you shortly on the Delta scoreboard. Dion one for three runner in scoring position with two out. A left hander up in their bullpen. It's got to be. Uh, it's got to be Real Cumier's friend Denis Boucher. The 1 0. Pop fouled out of play. It's 1 and 1. Who's the catcher you want to. Uh, you want the battery to be Real Cormier well, you... Cormier and Jorge Fabriga. He is a sick puppy. A ball and a strength to come. Chopped foul past first base coach Pat Carellis. And the count goes to a ball and two strikes. 7.05 is TV time tomorrow. Goodness. That expo booth a little crowded tonight. Furthest to the left is Roger Brulette doing the French speaking TV for. Into right field, but Walker is there. The inning is over. A leadoff single comes to nothing. We move on to the eighth inning with your score. Braves 5, Montreal 0. Here's a look at the Delta scoreboard. Florida has another home run from Gary Sheffield tonight, and they lead. Cincinnati a 4-2 lead over Houston in the fifth. They've rebounded after trailing 2-1. Chicago, how's, how are people beating Pittsburgh? I don't get it. And New York shutting out St. Louis after six. Some other games later on on the West Coast. We'll give you the American League in a bit. Sean Barry leads things off here and looks at a pitch high and away. One ball, no strikes. Barry came into the game fourth in the league and hitting. He's 0 for 2 tonight. They play him straight away in the outfield. High pop foul out of play. 
He's back after a couple of days off with a sore left elbow hit on the elbow by Darren Dreifert of the Dodgers and that may be changing his stroke a little bit tonight flying through some soreness. He's a product of the Kansas City organization as is Jeff Conine the left fielder for the Florida Marlins. Barry like to have those guys back. Sorry Skip. No, that's okay. He hit uh, Barry hit 261 last year. They're hopeful that his this hot streak of his is not a mirage and that he'll be up over the 300 mark and if so that'll make what is a very good team even better. A ball and two strikes. That ball is looped into center and it'll fall for a hit. So Barry is aboard and Will Cordero the batter he is struggling. 0 for 2 tonight 0 for his last 16. Here are those American League scores for you. New York beat Boston 3 to 1. Detroit knocked out Randy Johnson early. Griffey has hit a homer. So has Travis Fryman. Baltimore trailing or now tied with Cleveland at 2 2. Murray and Palmero have homered in that game. Milwaukee over Toronto. Chicago leading Kansas City. Franco's homer for the White Sox. No score at Texas. Oakland's at California later on. Line drive. There's another base hit. And trouble brews here in the eighth inning. Two on, nobody out. That'll probably get the Atlanta bullpen going. Cordero had been 0 for 16, but not anymore. And now Webster hitting in the ninth spot is the scheduled hitter. Webster out of the Minnesota organization. He's played there the last several years. Hit just 193 for them last year. But 280 in 1992 as a part time player. He's from Grambling State University where he majored in criminal justice. I think it's a good opportunity for him. He's going to be playing part time in Minnesota but. Wouldn't you rather play part time for a ball club that's pretty solid like Montreal. He's going to get his share of at bats behind Darren Fletcher. One thing about Boston going back to their score today, tonight where they lost to New York. They've made hay against the American League West. Who has as you know no one over 500. They're 13 and 2 against the West. And they're 20 and 7 record. So it'll be interesting to see how they do against the American League East now. Up high to Webster one ball no strikes. John Scherholz and I were talking on a radio interview before the game. Right. Really outside of that American League West everything else is pretty good with the mm -hmm. new divisional. Alignment. But that one is rather glaring. One ball no strikes. Right now the Giants are just at the 500 mark in the National League West but chances are very good. They'll be better than that as the year progresses. Can they get two? Great play. One out. Two out. What a play all the way around. Highway robbery all over the place. A great play by Pendleton. A great pivot by Lemke and a good stretch by McGriff. This is what started it all though a headlong dive. Lemke made the turn and for some reason Cordero didn't slide. He was peeling off at second base. If he slides he might make things a little more difficult for Lemke but what a great round the horn double play. So now it's a runner at third and two out instead of the bases loaded and nobody out and the game may be in jeopardy. Maddox losing a little bit here it would appear Mike Lansing is the batter. Still no activity in the bullpen. Ground ball to short should be out of it. Pac-Man has it. Inning over. A sensational double play. Two hits again. No runs again. No airs. One left. Bottom of the eighth. Braves are cruising. Five nothing. Five nothing Braves. We head to the bottom of the eighth inning. And a reminder about more Braves baseball coming your way tomorrow night at 7:05. It'll be Tom Glavin against Jeff Facero. And then Sunday at 105, John Smoltz against Ken Hill as this series against the Montreal Expos continues. And then Monday night, the Philadelphia Phillies come to town. And we'll have that one for you as well. Terry Pendleton leads off the bottom half of the eighth against Heredia and a home run cut, but he came up empty. 0 and 1 the count. 5 0 Atlanta. Our score some tough outs. Ahead in the ninth for Greg Maddox. Floyd Grissom and Walker the scheduled hitter. To the screen he's in the hole nothing and two. 
48,808. Fine crowd in attendance. Some of the folks have headed for home. Pendleton, Pendleton Gallagher, and McGriff, the first three for Atlanta here in the eighth inning. A ball and two strengths. The left hand hitter waits. Strike three called and he knew it. Pendleton called out of there. Terry 0 for 4 on the night has been out on strikes a couple of times. One that he disputed a little bit but certainly not that one. Everybody likes to come to the ballpark if you're a hitter skip and at least go home with one hit every night. You get hit the first time up you know then you maybe have a chance at two. Terry got robbed in the first inning of inning of extra bases by Grissom and that kind of set the tone for the rest of his evening. That's what's made this a terrific ball game. You've seen a couple of long home runs a bang bang play at the plate a couple of arguments as good a defensive play as you'd ever want to see and some great pitching from Maddox and Raphael Billiard missing by an eyelash hitting one out of here again second time this year he's come close. High chop toward third. Barry Fields throws. He pulled him off. And Floyd didn't try to make the tag. That'll be a boot on Barry. Sometimes as you as the first baseman on a play that's going to pull you off the bag a little bit, you do what they, they just call cheating. You just stick, go ahead and continue off the bag, make the catch. You don't try to leave your foot back there like you're trying to keep it on the bag. You catch it all in one motion coming off the base make you throw to second and a lot of times you get the call. It's an error on Barry. And Fred McGriff the batter. Pretty good night. Two homers. And he had designs on a third but he missed. Oh and one. A radio the third pitcher of the night for the expo. Look how shallow Grissom plays a big power hitter. You're right, he just dares you to hit it over his head. He went. Jim Quick made the call. It's 0 2. McGriff, not so sure, but he's a very quiet guy. He doesn't say much of anything. He lets his bat do his talk. The Braves are booing Quick pretty hard, but that's because they want to see McGriff get as many cuts as he can. And that'll give you an idea of Grissom and his. Positioning out there, he does play shallow. Didn't miss by much. Radio came in on him with a fastball. Martinez tried that in the first inning, and the next pitch went 462 feet. If you're a guy that plays that shallow like Grissom does, you got to have a lot of confidence in your in your first step and the jump you get on the ball. And you got to be a little bit fearless too. Sure you do. You got to have a lot of confidence in. Your range. Because you don't get back to that wall in time to reach around and find it and play that shallow. You? Well, he's shown us twice tonight how it's done. Two balls, two strikes. A weak hack that time. That's all right, Fred. You've had a, you've done your part. Two down. David Justice, the batter, one for three. David digs in. Gallagher, a conservative lead over at first base. Five nothing Atlanta is our score. Javi Lopez would be next, but they're two out in the inning. Low and away, one ball, no strengths. David's been moving up the average. He's up to 279. He's been collecting his hits as we go along here. Never anything in spectacular fashion, but that's that's good to see him still getting his one first, an occasional twofer. 
when he gets hot he's the kind of guy that can just pick you up and carry you for a while. And you know that'll happen somewhere along the way. You talked to Jeff Blauser before the game. huh? How's yes I did. Uh, he's feeling a little better. He said that uh, maybe tomorrow or Sunday he'll be allowed to take some ground balls. He said he's been practicing his throwing motion a little bit but that's without the weight of a ball in his hand and he's not sure how he might respond to that. Started to go tried to stop. No swing. The only thing about that injury is. Trying to do too much too soon because it can cause you to be on the disabled list a whole lot longer than you planned. Hit hard Gallagher just about got tagged by that ball. But he reaches second safely. And Justice two out of four and Javi Lopez the banner. Boy here's some distressing news. Blue Jays outfielder Joe Carter. Who has 39 RBIs leads the major leagues. Has been diagnosed with benign positional vertigo. The diagnosis was made after he experienced dizziness early today. He's resting at home. His status is day to day. It's benign, so I guess that's not too serious. First, they said an inner ear infection, but now they've changed that. I hope. I think after the injuries, or not the injuries, but the maladies that plagued Nick Asaski and Ken Daly, the pitcher with the Blue Jays, that's the first thing people think of these days when you hear about the inner ear infection or the dizziness. One ball, no strikes. Benign, though that that sounds odd. Yeah, I don't. But benign positional vertigo. Hmm. Home run cut, but he didn't get it. It's one and one. We'll have to ask Dave Persley and Jeff Porter about that one tomorrow. I wonder if that's in this glossary we've got here. In the Braves media game. Everything else is in there. Nope. Line in the right. Walker is there. And that's that. Nothing doing in the eighth. One hit, no runs. One air, two left. We go to the ninth inning with your score. Five nothing Atlanta. Ninth inning. Cliff Floyd leads it off. Maddox going for the shutout. He's got the two, three, and four hitters in their order to get. Greg McMichael getting ready just in case. Maddox seeks his second shutout of the year. 0 oh 1 the count. And officially his third complete game although there was another game that he pitched nine innings. And the game went into the tenth and he picked up the win as the Braves were able to pick up a run for him. As the pitcher of record. Ground ball to short Pac-Man has it. One down. If he gets it it will be a 16th major league shutout. It's pretty impressive too when you throw eight shutout innings and your ERA only goes from 112 to 096. <laughs> he is better than sliced bread. One out, nobody on. Right through there, it's 0 and 1. Grissom, one out of three, has also reached on an air. He has stolen a base and been cut down trying to steal. Upstairs, a ball and a strike. Chin music. As the old saying goes, one and two. Rather, two and one, excuse me. Two balls and a strike. Two 
Chased a high fastball, fouled it back. One of the things that I found interesting, Maddox said in an interview on our sister station on Sports South, an interview they do at home with the family, he said something about how he never gets too high after wins and never too low after losses. He always finds good things that he did in losses, and things that he could improve on in wins. He is a, you know, it's a cliche, I guess, but he is really a a professional. He goes to work every day and puts in his time at the office and tries to get better every time he goes out there. He's a thinking man's player. I fly short right. David Justice barely had to move. Two out. Be careful here. This is a guy who can hurt you. He's got good power. Larry Walker. Now nine out of 31 against Maddox in his career. He's 0 for 3 tonight. He's yet to get the ball out of the infield. They're on their feet here for Greg Maddox. Oh, that's great to see. Oh, and one curveball. In his other shutout skip, a three hit shutout against the Pirates, he also went the distance without walking a batter, and he's not walked anybody tonight. Oh and two. He has seven walks in 57 innings this year. Amazing. The 0-2. Oh boy. A little bit inside, I guess. That was close. That was his cutter that he likes to get those lefties out with. Yes. He gets the shot out of the Braves. The lead goes to a game and a half in the National League East. Five nothing the final. Totals and highlights. But first our player of the game. And our player of the game this evening even though Greg Maddox fashioned the shutout. He had a lot of help from Fred McGriff who is our holiday in player of the game. Fred had two home runs including a bomb to left center field. This was a two run blast in the sixth inning. It went an estimated 423 feet and he hit one to right field earlier in the contest that went over 460 feet. Fred McGriff our Holiday Inn player of the game and we'll be back with some final comments right after these messages. Nineteen ninety four Atlanta Braves baseball on TBS has been brought to you by smooth bush beer and easy drinking bush light. Head for the mountains of Bush. By Delta Airlines. You'll love the way we fly. And by Aflac, insuring over 38 million people worldwide. Good news. The Braves have won two in a row, and they've both been shutouts as they blanked Montreal tonight five to nothing. They had 10 hits, two errors, and they left four. Expos only got four hits. They committed one error and left four. Greg Maddox with the four hit shutout earns his fifth win of the season. Pedro Martinez takes the loss. Time of the game a nifty little two hour and 18 minute job tonight. Forty eight thousand eight hundred and eight here at the stadium to see it. So all around a good night for the Braves who improved to a game and a half over the Expos in the East. And a battle of portsiders tomorrow night. We'll have it for you at 7.05 as Tom Glavin and Jeff Facero oppose one another here from Atlanta Fulton County State. Next on TBS Charles Bronson stars as a union official caught in an intense and dangerous political struggle. The name of the movie Active Vengeance tonight's movie next on TBS for Joe Simpson for Pete Van Weeren Don Sutton our entire TBS crew Skip Carey from the ballpark. Hope you'll be with us tomorrow. So long everybody.